Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Travel with Roseanne, and please like and subscribe, and leave me a comment if you find anything that I say interesting, or if you have any comments as well. Thank you so much for being here, and today I thought I would talk about international travel. I know we're heading towards the end of summer, but you know the fall is a really great time to travel internationally. In fact, I love to travel in September and October. Those are my favorite times. Well, I actually like the spring as well. But anyway, I love the fall season and it's really a great, um, a great time to travel internationally. Not as many people and kids are back to school, so you have just a little more, um, you're able to enjoy the uh, area a lot better, even though sometimes some things are closed, but I still think it's worth it. So let's get started about what's important when you are traveling internationally. I'm going to go through 10, 10 different things. So the first thing is your passport. So you want to make sure, of course, that you have your passport. All of those documents are so important. And of course, now your vaccine card, just to make sure. I know things have been lightening up around COVID, but you never know. So bring your vaccine card. If the country you're going to has uh, requirements around that, um, so you have to check every time you go to a different country you need to check what their requirements are and you can go on to the embassy website and they have um they have they have uh, information for you in fact i could put a link below um from my website where you can put in whatever country you're going to and it'll show the covid requirements so you need to make sure you have that you also need to make sure that you still have six months worth of uh, validity <laughs> that your passport's not going to expire within six months of your travel you have to have make sure you do that so um what i do is i start renewing my passport a year out so that might be a really good thing to think about and um, it's really important to make sure you have copies of your passport so you want to make sure that you carry copies and have an electronic copy just in case and if all else fails, make sure you have somebody at home that has a copy of your passport just in case. Now to tag on to that, the second thing that is interesting and uh, a really smart thing to do is to register with the embassy that you're traveling to another country. It's called the STEP program, which is Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. And what that is, is you go into the website you register, you, read, you add your trips, each trip that you go internationally. And what that allows is for you to get notified if anything should be happening. If there are any, uh, is there any information that you need to know about while you're traveling in this country or that country? If they know where you are, they can notify you if there are any issues. If there are issues that you have, for example, if you lose your passport or if there's anything that goes wrong and you need to go to the embassy, you're already registered and you're already there and they know you're there and that could speed up the process of you getting help. So it's a really good way to uh, make sure that you're safe. I mean, we're always going to be safe, at least that's my take on it, but it's a good way to add an extra layer of security to your trip. Also, if your family can't reach you, the embassy can find, you know, can look out for you and try to find out where you are. So it's a really great program. The other thing to know when you're going to another country is their currency. So some of the things that you should really do is do some research to find out what the conversion rates are. Um, it's always nice to know how far or how not far your dollar is going to go. Right now, the the euro and the dollar are pretty even, which is hasn't happened in a really long time. That's a super great time to go to Italy. There are times when it's been one dollar and thirty cents dollar per one euro so you need to kind of know how far your money's going to go and you can get apps that can kind of help you do that and then that way when you buy something you can use your app to figure out how much you're actually spending the other thing also to notice or to remember when you are in a store and you want to purchase something make sure that you purchase it in the local currency It'll ask you, do you want to charge US dollars or do you want to charge euros, for example? 
always choose the euros because you're going to get an extra charge for the US dollars. You also want to make sure that your credit card, you don't have any foreign transaction fees because you don't want to get charged every time you use your card. And there are a lot of different offers that you can look into. So if I were you, I'd be very careful and look at that. Under money, there is another thing to remember is you can use your ATM card and try to use a bank. Don't go to those ATM machines that are just the ATM machines because you'll get charged more money. If you go to a bank, a local bank, and use their ATM, it'll be cheaper for you. I have found that I needed to change my PIN to a four number code so that when I go to Europe, they'll take the four number code. So um, you want to look into that and make sure that your code and that your card, your ATM card can work there. A lot of credit card companies now, they don't need to be notified. I know Chase doesn't need to be notified, but you need to look into to make sure that your credit card is uh, okay to use um, in another country. And then uh, for phones, you need to make sure that you can get an international calling, uh, an international plan. You don't want to get surprised at the end of the trip when you're using your phone. Um, so I have T-Mobile right now and I have unlimited data, which is really great because then I could use my maps on my phone. I could use a lot of um, all of the apps. I could use WhatsApp for calling, especially with Wi-Fi. So having the data is really helpful. And if you want to make a phone call on your phone, you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're paying for because it can really add up. Um, so if you're planning on driving internationally, it's a really good idea to get an international driver's license. And I've gotten them at AAA. You just go there if you belong to that. Um, I think there, there's another place where you can get an international driver's license. I'll put the link below. But you want to make sure that you get an international driver's license just in case. And speaking of cars, you need to be very careful because your insurance for your car here in the United States won't work in another country. So if they offer you insurance, you should consider getting that insurance. It would be, uh, you know, it would not be very great if you got into an accident and you didn't have any insurance when you were in another country. Um, and then speaking of insurances, one of the things that especially has come up now with the whole COVID and with, you know, trips canceling and all of those things that have happened around COVID, um, it's really a good idea to get trip insurance. And you want to make sure that your insurance will cover any medical issues that will cover your flight home and any expenses that you incur. So you should really consider getting your uh, trip insurance when you go on international trips. Um, one thing that's really cool that works super well is Google Translate and that's an app that you can download on your phone and you could also take a picture of the text and a picture of an item and it can translate it for you and that could be really helpful if you are in a pinch and you don't have anyone that speaks English which most people speak English but you never know it's nice to have that app on your phone the other thing is tipping protocols so Every country is a little bit different, and I know as Americans, we feel like, you know, we want to tip people. But tipping uh, is different in every country, so it would be nice to do some research around tipping so that you feel comfortable, you feel like you at least know what the protocol is, and then you could do whatever you want, but knowing is, is really helpful. I remember when I first went to Italy and uh, I did some research and they said, they don't tip in Italy, they don't tip in Italy, but we felt so bad not tipping. So we always leave, left a little something, but now a lot of the European countries are used to Americans tipping, so they like it. So anyway, you could choose what you want to do, but it's really nice to look into what the tipping protocols are of that country. Um, I'm going to talk about flights just real quick. It's super important to make sure that you give yourself time. Always go to the airport early. 
three hours ahead and I know that sometimes you could swing you can go through really easy but you want to make sure that you get to the airport early you want to make sure that your connections have enough time in case something happens to that first flight at least two hours in between flights just to make sure that you can catch that second flight if a flight is going to get canceled, you need to look at their refund policy. The Department of Transportation talks about if the flight is canceled based because the airlines are canceling that. If you choose to not rebook that flight, you're entitled to a, a refund and not just a credit. So that's really important to know. If you're going on a cruise or you're going to a wedding or you're going somewhere where you absolutely have to be there on, for example, Saturday, try to get there a couple days early. It will be so much to your advantage. I was just talking to a friend who had everything go wrong with them and they were supposed to get on a boat in Venice. And fortunately for them, they booked uh, two days early and so they were able to have some leeway time when they missed their flight. Flight got canceled. So many things happen. So give yourself time so that you don't have to stress when you get there. So it's really important to remember that you want to make your vacation smooth. And if you can add a couple extra days in the front end, it'll make your trip a lot nicer. And just one more tip. Always make sure that when you're booking a flight that you book the same airline for, you know, or at least in the same uh, category. You don't want to like fly United and then switch over to Delta because you'll, you could be in different terminals and, and then you have to worry about your luggage and all of that stuff. So these are just a few of the international tips that I think will be really helpful right now as we're coming into the fall season and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more traveling and um, I'll come up with some more international tips because there are so many like what to bring with you on the airplane when you're going on a long trip those are really great tips to know too so anyway well thank you so much for joining me and watching this whole entire video if you made it to the end I'm so grateful thank you so much have a great day and we'll talk soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts and what you think about traveling. All right, take care. Bye.